and I believe we are live. Do we have any visitors yet? Let me check the YouTube channel. Sure. Yeah, beginning to come in now. Good. Okay. Right. So, hello, everybody. I hope you're well. Um, welcome to this uh, really quick um, uh, hangout. It won't be too too long. I'll uh, I'll try and keep it under half an hour if possible. Uh, but it was basically uh, crypto mining made simple. Um, so I'm going to start from the very basics, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, this is to help everybody that is new to it, and a lot of people are asking for a tutorial on this. Um, uh, you know, by no means am I saying that I'm you know a world expert on it, but uh, the, the the principles and the fundamentals of it are very straightforward. Actually, um, what we're not going to do is get into the technical details of uh, the arithmetic uh, and the algorithms behind all of this. So um, we'll just keep it as simple as possible. So obviously, as you probably know, uh, Bitcoins are a relatively new phenomenon. And they were born out of a necessity to find an alternative uh, in an environment where the credit crisis had caused major currencies of the world, uh, including all the way from the Japanese yen to the Canadian dollar, um, uh, and all the currencies in between uh, the various longitudes, um, they were all under severe pressure because they had to be printed in order to uh, bail out and do stuff uh, 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 to help save banks and the general world economy. That the, 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 they were simply being printed too many of them and you know, is diluting the intrinsic value. So Satoshi. Uh, a Japanese person, but I think it's actually an Australian guy with a Japanese name. I don't know. There's some conspiracy about that. Um, but one person came up with the idea, why not have a digital currency that has a fixed number? He fixed the number at 21 million. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. So far, just over half of those have been mined. And today's topic is crypto mining, so I'm going to cover the mining aspect as well. Uh, but basically, <clears throat> uh, more than half of the 21 million have been mined. And the reason this number needs to be finite, it tells you already that it is something very different from the dollar or the pound or the euro, which can be printed pretty much you know, at the press of a button, billions get printed. So uh, the, the scarcity of the Bitcoin is what makes it so unique. And so how does it actually get mined? Well, it's literally a computer program, uh, which is the mining software. And the program is a complex set of mathematical problems that need to be solved. In order to solve those problems, um, a processor needs to run through a circuitry and keep running until the problem is solved. It is such a complex problem to solve that a machine will take a very long time to solve it. So just like how, for example, uh, at the time of the credit crunch, uh, there were such things as collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, uh, and collateralized loan obligations, CLOs. These were basically pools and pools of various different home loans, some from uh, you know, the pre prime area of Orange County, California, lumped together with housing estates in San Diego. So, you know, if these were lumped together, they all had different interest rates, they all had different qualities, different creditworthiness, and it was just too complex to figure out exactly what it is. So it took a supercomputer to work out some of the complex CDO CLOs, what their actual worth and yield would be. You see, so even in the real world scenario, there can be such complex problems that take a supercomputer to process it. Similarly, the uh, mining software for uh, a Bitcoin is complex enough that it takes a set of algorithms uh, to be solved by a processor. Now, um, a few years ago, well, actually, at the beginning of uh, Bitcoin, around 2009, 2010, um, you could, you could use a home computer, a good quality home computer, 
plug it into the electric uh, circuitry <clears throat> and literally mine 200 bitcoins if you liked because it was that easy but um, as everything progressed more and more people started bitcoin mining and i can assure you i'm not i'm not uh, uh, an it person but there are teenagers in the world mining bitcoins from their bedrooms because all you have to do is figure out how it works get the right hardware know how to use the software have your parents permission to use electricity plug the thing in the next thing you know you're mining bitcoins now it's as easy as that teenagers can do it the reason most people are wary of it and shy of it is just like anything else they're not I'm not sure they've heard of it they don't necessarily know if they ever really want to get involved in it um, so a lot of the uh, hurdles to Bitcoin mining and cryptocurrency generally are actually psychological and cultural barriers rather than technological barriers. Technology can be learned, just like you and I both, I too, um, was a few years too late to Facebook. But now that I know Facebook, I can figure it out. You know, it's, it's just a matter of learning. Same thing with Bitcoin mining. The... Uh, 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 it seems like, okay, you could just plug in a computer and run a software and, you know, hey, you can mine all the Bitcoin in the world, right? It's not that simple. The way the program is designed is if more and more miners join in, it increases the difficulty rate of mining, okay? So more people join the mining pool. That means it's that much harder for the computer to be able to solve those problems and not until you've solved the problem will the Bitcoin actually be generated and the Bitcoin generated is literally a computer sequence added to your computer and that's your Bitcoin with which you can then you can transfer the sequence as it is and make a payment with it and you know it's, it's a very simple concept really all you need is a, a, a wallet just like a, a, a lady's clutch bag okay like I would say a clutch is 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 a good example of showing what what a, a bitcoin wallet is except it's electronic so you've got an electronic clutch in which you keep your bitcoins which are electronic codes and instead of transferring a whole bitcoin you can transfer a fraction at a time um, and it will still contain the value that is expressed in the market the more people there are mining the more uh, uh, the higher is the difficulty rate <clears throat> so there are some Lots of very clever people, very intelligent people, you know, PhDs in mathematics and so on. Um, and the ones we are associated with, um, and it's our privilege to be associated with them, um, is a company called Genesis Mining. Genesis Mining are the leaders in cloud-based mining. They have the superior most equipment, uh, and they have very clever, very intelligent people running the business, very professional people running the business. Of course, there's competition in the space, obviously, and the more competition there is, the less and less uh, Bitcoin mining becomes less and less profitable. Now, a few years ago, Bitcoin was literally a few cents, um, uh, and you could buy thousands of Bitcoin uh, for the price of a pizza. Uh, today, one Bitcoin is over $700. So as more and more people enter the Bitcoin mining side of it, the ones running the computer program, um, the harder it becomes to um, uh, uh, realize uh, 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 a profit from Bitcoin. So when the difficulty rate goes up, the profit margin shrinks. And because the profit margin is shrinking, higher the bitcoin more is the profitability for now but going forward bitcoin will have to be consistently uh, more expensive for uh, a miner to be consistently more profitable and keep up with it so it is an upward trajectory which is exactly why the predictions in the market are that you can have uh, you know up to ten thousand dollars per bitcoin in the future this is some prediction coming out of uh, some whiz kids in china india whatever i don't know if it's true i don't know how valid it is i can honestly not tell you nobody knows where it's going to be tomorrow and to be very honest with you i always paint this simple scenario just so you have uh, you're left with absolutely no doubts um, a lot of the mining farms are in cold countries like uh, iceland 
and uh, lovely people of Iceland, but they have an vo active volcano there, right? So you never know what can happen. Um, you know, we've got a few nutcases running uh, 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 nuclear arsenals in the world. Uh, one electromagnetic pulse, and you don't know what the effect will be on the internet generally, and Bitcoin also uh, by default. So you know, there are all kinds of natural as well as man-made scenarios. But there are also other threats. And the question that was asked earlier on my Facebook Live, uh, and people wanted answers to that, is what are the natural threats? What are the threats to Bitcoin? Well, <clears throat> because there is no centralized control, there is no single regulator or government or any kind of uh, uh, organized, uh, authorized uh, entity, a uh, group of uh, people with the deliberate task of policing uh, uh, cryptocurrency doesn't exist yet. Um, it is user defined, and because it is user defined, it's literally Bitcoin is whatever it is because of people like you and me, and others who were there a little before us. And as we start Bitcoin mining, and as we start using it, we will become one of them, and they will be us. So it's basically user as in people defined. And this is where also there is a problem because human nature kicks in and all sorts of Ponzi schemes start to see this as an opportunity to make a bit of money. And every time you come across uh, 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 a new name for a cryptocurrency, bear in mind that since Bitcoin became more and more publicly acceptable a few years ago, um, over 500 cryptocurrencies came and went and no trace remaining even now uh, there's about over 200 still active and out of those maybe 90 percent will vanish more keep cropping up and for a cr currency a cryptocurrency to survive or even to compete with an existing bitcoin they must really have some unique selling point so this is why i I personally, this is my assessment. I'm not speaking as some world authority on the subject, but I suspect that something like a Scott coin will have a regional, purpose built, specific utility. And because it is being used, or it will may become uh, uh, popular buying your groceries, going to your news agents, going down the pub, you know, buying a pub lunch or whatever. If it is basically consumer and vendor, a quick, easy uh, a cryptocurrency transaction that is not controlled by the European Central Bank in Brussels, which Scotland is nervous about, and not controlled by the Bank of England, which Scotland hates, uh, uh, that leaves Scotland with very little because it was the second banking center of uh, the United Kingdom. Edinburgh was huge, Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank of Scotland, and all these various big banks. <clears throat> have had a major uh, center there, Scottish widows, the pension uh, uh, people. You know, so if you, if you uh, put it into context, Scotcoin, a regional specific uh, 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 cryptocurrency, has a real utility value. But that cannot be said for many others that are there just you know, competing with others based on one little unique selling feature. Um, and this is why I'm a little careful with where I uh, uh, explore. There's a few um, being uh, promoted through multi-level marketing, and I'm very keen to follow their progress because, you know, if it's a good opportunity, you know, a, a business person should take advantage of that. And I think some of them might be worth joining. Uh, others may not, to be honest. Um, you know, so you, you have to evaluate this. But for, for now, Bitcoin is king. And now allow me to share my screen with you. And <clears throat> I hope this goes smoothly. Um, and I believe I am sharing already. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Bill. Um, so it's waiting for the actual slide to come into view. It's, a, it's done something wobbly. That's it, it's working now. All right, cool. So, the, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, this is just what, you know, other uh, prominent, influential people, whether you like them or not, agree with them or not, but this is what other people are talking about uh, Bitcoin. So you've got major business leaders, including Bill Gates, uh, Peter Thiel, who uh, co-founder of PayPal, along with uh, Elon Musk. You know, 
he's a big Bitcoin fan and he might be uh, uh, taken to another level by Mr. Trump if that happens. Uh, John McAfee, uh, the, the uh, uh, antivirus guy, you know, so Richard Branson, he's actually purchased, uh, uh, he spent a lot of money um, because he wants a stake in the whole cryptocurrency scene and he's a big spender in this area. So these are the people from the business side. And then you have politicians who are beginning to recognize, look, there's something very incredible happening here. This is people power uh, at its best. And to be honest with you, when people come together and come up with an idea for each other's mutual uh, advancement, and these kind of people come and support it and they comment on it, you know, this is something that people have achieved rather than a person in power imposing it upon the people. So this is an absolute amazing development. Um, now you've got the intellectuals uh, right here. Now uh, Jim Rickards is our almost practically a resident uh, a gold expert. He's the top guy uh, in the in the world of, of precious metals. Uh, a, a very serious person to take notice of. Slightly scary with the, the things he says, but you know he he's on on our uh, panel of uh, educators in our back office. And, you know, so these are uh, literally very important people. And, you know, um, this is uh, Marco Streng. Uh, he is the CEO of Genesis Mining from where we get our mining power. Uh, this presentation will be available to you uh, when the stream is over. I'll be posting the presentation uh, uh, on the YouTube link. So for easy access for you. Okay. And what I wanted to show you is here. This is a really nice website, 99bitcoins.com. Uh, just bear this in mind if you wanted to do some own exploring about what would, it, what would it do for you if you decided to go Bitcoin mining. Bear in mind that the two big expenditures are the initial capital expenditure of having a massively powerful, extremely powerful uh, uh, um, hardware. Uh, with an ASIC card. ASIC is basically a super advanced graphic card um, and the thing really churns uh, uh, a lot of information therefore it needs a lot of electricity. So you've got the initial startup cost plus the ongoing cost of electricity. Unless you have you know a spring next door with some kind of a water mill running that generates electricity uh, you know it is really not worth your while probably to mine it privately from home anymore and that's when people pool and when people do the pooling this is what it is um, genesis mining is essentially where lots and lots of miners come together and pool the way they did it is they set up the whole equipment uh, the, the latest and the best quality of uh, uh, hardware and uh, in the best possible location that they could find where electricity is very reasonable and efficient and um, we then go and buy a share in that particular mining operation and therefore we are part of the pool. We join this pool of miners. So, you know, don't be scared away by the terminology used. It's actually as logical as it really sounds. A pool uh, is literally a pool where people pool together, literally. So, you know, um, here are some really good Bitcoin basics. It will go through various things like is it worth it? Guide to mining and guide to hardware. Let me show you the best Bitcoin mining hardware here, for example. And <clears throat> here you can see there's different types of. Uh, 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 this is the manif This is the actual unit uh, ant miner, and here are the different uh, uh, processes basically that churn out, and you know what the power consumption is. You need to work this all out. You know. It can get complicated. This is why, you know, it's very straightforward. Instead of doing that, why not just buy a little bit from uh, these guys and let them, uh, you know, take care of it, basically. Now, when I mentioned the other currencies, here's a whole bunch of them. So Bittrex is a good exchange to look at. In Bittrex, you'll find all current uh, uh, coins that are trading in the market. You will see that, you know, some of them have 
the, the volume shown here is the daily traded volume. It's not the actual uh, uh, total outstanding volume of coins. And here it will tell you how old that coin is. So if you see a coin that is basically started out uh, uh, in 2014, you now know that it's uh, just uh, under two years old. And if it is as old as that, then obviously there must be something, there must be some reason it's still going. So that's one way of uh, checking, you know, how old is it? Um, but in the pricing, you will see that they're really, really cheap. Like $1 can sometimes buy you thousands of them. So this is where the, the uh, question arises, you know, what is the longevity of these things? And a lot of people buying Bitcoin, uh, buying these kind of coins, you can literally trade in and out of them and make a quick buck. You know, if one is going down in value, uh, you know, you can pick it up cheap and then you sell it when it goes up in value like Zcash for example uh, went up in value 29.9 percent this is one of the latest on the market it literally launched end of October there you go now you know you can literally buy one sell the other buy the other sell the other and you can really make money here if you just wanted to sort of you know literally gamble around with it but uh, a lot of people buy accumulate and hoard coins for a simple reason hoping that this 0 0.0003 will become $3 or $30, and then you're looking at basically uh, a value worth millions, literally. Um, but then, again, the risk is it's like trading a penny stock. It could go under any time. And uh, if you choose to take that risk, know that this is a totally and utterly unregulated market. So there is no uh, uh, question of, you know going anywhere trying to complain to anyone that you got ripped off basically you take your risk and you can play with these um, but the purpose of cryptocurrency really the purpose of any currency to be honest with you is a, a means of payment a means to facilitate a transaction where something is exchanged it's it's a substitute for bartering so um, to buy a currency to hold it for it to go up in value is never been the intended function of a currency so trading this actually is pure opportunism it isn't and can never be uh, 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 truthful to the actual purpose of money itself of currency itself okay so you know try this out Bittrex exchange you'll see several pages of currencies here and there are. Uh, uh, this is ether based. Um, this is the exchange for uh, fiat based, basically. Um, and these are the slightly illiquid ones, right? Um, again, have a look, play around. Um, you know, if you're interested in trading, this this is a good way to start looking at it. Now, what sets apart and why Bitcoin is are gaining so much tra attraction, so much interest the world over is because <clears throat> when you send money, if you were to send money to me, for example, or I was to send to you, it leaves my account, goes uh, through my bank into a central clearinghouse, and from that clearinghouse, which is usually another large bank, it comes into your bank's clearinghouse. So one clearinghouse to another clearinghouse, and from that clearinghouse, then it finally goes into your local bank, and then you get to see it. So there are four or five entities involved usually in every cash transaction, uh, uh, if it's a, a normal banking transaction. Uh, blockchain is uh, basically a ledger where every single transaction, and look at it go, it's just every flicker is one payment taking place on in the world, and you may never know who's paying whom. It doesn't really matter. Um, it, all the transactions are recorded. You can basically look them up by date. You can look them up by uh, millisecond almost. And it will tell you when a specific transaction took place. It will tell you the overall volume and it will tell you, you know, what's exactly going on. So here basically it is from me to you directly a payment that is recorded on this system. And because it is recorded here, Everybody gets to see it. All those who are involved in this get to see it at the same time. This is the major advantage. This is the huge advantage because it's it's an open ledger. Uh, it is very transparent. Um, and the big risk, really, 
uh, the only major big risk right now is hacking. You know, there are there are uh, uh, slightly worthless elements in society that uh, you know think they can just come in and steal, and you know they'll somehow do well. Hacking is the big big uh, issue, but you know um, the people that are clever enough to operate a system like this on a mutually uh, agreeable basis are also clever enough to fight those hackers back. That leaves the second biggest risk uh, uh, for uh, cryptocurrency, and that is government regulation. And I'll get onto that in a moment. I just wanted to show you really quickly. We've seen, you know, how these uh, big shots are all supporting Bitcoin. Uh, it's gaining more and more acceptability. Expedia using it. Dell computers use it. Uh, Shopify use it, obviously. And as it improves in in uh, acceptability, you know, we are going to find ourselves. Uh, at the very leading edge and why I wanted to show you is uh, bear with me. It's coming in a moment uh, Yeah, the, I you know, just wanted to mention there's over 10 million Bitcoin wallets obviously, you know a few people have four or five respectively But this broadly tells you that now more and more people are opening wallets So therefore the acceptance is going up, you know in January 2011 um, there wasn't even 50,000 people using it. Um, uh, uh, sorry, 50,000 no, wasn't even 50,000 transactions taking place, and now basically, you know, it's shot through five times as much. So there is uh, uh, increased acceptance worldwide. Um, I just wanted to quickly show you uh, Genesis Mining. I don't know if it's in here. Perhaps it's not. Uh, bear with me. Yeah, here. So I'll just quickly log into my account and I can show you straight away. Um, there you go. There's my crypto. Right. So this is this is in my back office. This is the cryptocurrency mining power that I have. Um, uh, obviously, I put my Bitcoin wallet details in here. That's a unique number um, and it keeps changing every now and then. I can go and refresh it and change it now if i wanted to um, and i've got a personal hash rate of 3.218 tera hash what does that mean it just simply means that i've got uh, a, a reasonable share in mining uh, in that uh, pooled operation i own uh, uh, this much uh, a portion of it this is my slice of the pie and that pie is basically giving me Roughly 1.05 dollars per day, subject to terms and conditions. And these are very important because you know it's very important to explain this to you now and going forward that um, uh, something can happen that will basically make this entire contract worthless, and I will be sitting on absolutely nothing other than what I've already earned. But what I've already earned is paid out to me on a daily basis. So you're basically, whatever it costs you to get into this, whatever the cost is, um, is gradually recovered little by little every single day. And when you have enough of it, uh, when you have, like, say, $30, $40 of this, you can go ahead and buy some more of this and keep adding to it. Now, this is not a financial instrument, so I'm not going to use financial industry terms. But essentially, if you are earning and reusing that earning to purchase more mining power, then what you're essentially doing is you're snowballing your mining power itself, therefore having an increased impact on the actual payout rates over here. So how does that work? So this is the beauty. This is where we are actually even in a better position than the the third party that supplies our mining power, which is Genesis Mining, we are better off than even them. Why? Because when you go to Genesis Mining, let's actually go to Genesis Mining. So Genesis Mining, there you go. That's Genesis Mining, okay? So if I want to go for the pricing, let's go for the pricing. And Zcash is sold out. Um, was it this? Yeah, this is it. This is lifetime Bitcoin plan Genesis mining. Okay, two hundred 
this is a small share costs you 30 bucks this is obviously uh you know 10 times more well 12 and a half times more in 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 share terms and it'll cost you obviously proportionately more the biggest package they do is fifteen thousand. it'll cost you two thousand dollars two thousand dollars will give you fifteen thousand and currently at the moment this will pay you about seven dollars a day for the rest of your life seven dollars a day for the rest of your life provided uh, an event doesn't take place that cancels out the whole mining power i'll get to that in a moment but if you wanted to buy directly from genesis you get to pick one two or three or you can pick multiples of the middle one or you can pick multiples of the small one in order to make up you know and get to a higher number in our case we get power from the exact same company but you can take little by little whatever your budget if your budget is 210 no problem you'll get 1.4 terahash if your budget is 270 you get 1.8 terahash if your budget is 600 you get 4.0 terahash so if you have spare cash that you want to add to your mining power you're welcome just use a bank wire and send it in or use a credit card and buy more mining power no problem but if you've earned any bonuses commissions referral fees or any kind of income generated by our compensation plan and that has gone into your back office now you're able to use a gift certificate send yourself the gift certificate create it for yourself post the gift certificate code in here tick the box and go confirm boom and you can basically use your income to purchase more but that's not it uh, uh, there's more to it you remember how money was being paid out um, on a daily basis little by little into your uh, 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 Bitcoin wallet uh, coming week you'll be able to bring all of that money from your Bitcoin wallet back into the system and use that so there should be another tab here somewhere I'm not quite sure where but you can bring Bitcoin into the system and keep adding to your mining power as much as you like. This is incredibly powerful because as you can see, you know, you keep adding mining power and it keeps improving your estimated daily payout in terms of Bitcoin. Then all you have to do is figure out how much this Bitcoin is worth in dollars and that's your daily income. So you're earning daily income because literally a machine, a server farm, that looks like this over here with literally those uh, s9 uh, 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 processors stacked up one after another connected by cables and they're basically just working away at the algorithm and hashing away and that is what you paid for to begin with so if you buy 15 tera hash i don't know exactly how it would be represented on one of these but you know let's say uh, one of these s9 processors produces uh, 5 tera hash then if you bought 15 tera hash you basically have three of these boxes worth and you own the mining power the mining capacity that it generates you don't own the hardware you never had to buy the hardware you never had to organize the space or the expertise or the cables or the electricity or the cooling plant or whatever you had nothing to do other than uh, uh, invest literally invest in a mining share and this is not a financial investment just to be very clear with you it's not a financial investment it's like buying a few square yards of a coal mine you you buy a coal mine and whatever coal comes out is yours provided you pick up only from that number of square yards that you've actually paid for so here you've got a few processes you paid for they, you don't own the processors, but you own the product that comes out. The product that comes out is the actual Bitcoin itself. So this is one of the reasons why we have this incredible advantage. You can literally, you know, I'm going to use the word compounding because, you know, snowballing is uh, basically fudging it. You know, compounding is the best, better way of describing it. And you can compound not just with your own money, with your, you can compound with your uh, income generated through the system and you can then also compound by uh, your referral fees and bonuses that you've collected and all of this adds to your mining power what do you do with your money well it's your choice 
with your money, you can keep doing more of this and you become more and more Bitcoin centric. The idea really is to generate this to a point where you're comfortable with your daily rate of pay and then divert some of it to our other excellent product, which is the world's best gold and silver at wholesale price. And just a quick thing here, I wanted to show you the difficulty rate went up. What that simply means is more miners have suddenly joined. I understand that the Chinese are spending uh, not millions, but hundreds of millions into equipment and all sorts. They are really going for Bitcoin. Um, th there's a catch-22 here. Nobody knows whether they'll ever recover the investment they're putting into it, whether they even know what they're doing, because mining is a very, very fine line between your total capital costs and costs of operation versus the profitability of bitcoin and a few other variables this is why you know it's best done by matt's phds and as i uh, explained to you earlier you know there are people like marco uh, uh, streng uh, you know these are the phds let them do what they have to do um, you know and we find it more convenient just to enjoy the benefits of having access to the system here you can see the uh, 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 peta hash rate this is the total network hash rate um, and you know a lot of people will ask you well what's your peta hash rate you can look in the back office here ours is 1917 it's gone down from 2090 something just a couple of days ago so the hash rate has come down difficulty has gone up that simply means there are more miners playing uh, uh, in the field so therefore Bitcoin is a little harder to obtain because it is a little harder to obtain, that adds its scarcity. If it adds its scarcity, that means its price will go up. If its price goes up, it becomes more profitable. That means this balance is addressed. The, 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 uh, uh, it becomes less profitable if the uh, 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 difficulty rate goes up, but it triggers a chain reaction where the price goes up, and when the price goes up, the difficulty rate comes down again. Uh, it doesn't come down in absolute terms, but it come da comes down relative to the price of Bitcoin. Um, if you're a maths genius, you, you probably know this better than me. Um, but you know, if you needed any more explanation on this, get in touch with me on Facebook and you know, or Skype, and we can talk about this. So, guys, I hope this was uh, reasonably useful as an introduction to Bitcoin mining. Um, we are bringing uh, live a uh, Bitcoin exchange very very soon which means if you are into your marketing and you know what you're doing just figure out what is the hashtag for each of these currencies so here I'm imagining it would be something like this is low liquidity let's go for high liquidity okay let's go for the Dutch Golden yeah, this is a Gilders version so if I did hashtag Golden I would be targeting all the hashtag Golden people because they are the ones and so are the rest of them who need to know and who deserve to know that we have a facility where they can take what they own here and swap it, obviously through a, the appropriate uh, method and channel, and swap it into gold and silver. And literally, I'm not kidding you guys, we are absolutely competitive. US dollars, 1,214 was our last price fixed in the morning when gold was literally trading at 1212 in the last few hours it has dropped significantly but this was our price we were straddling the wholesale price almost away by just two dollars nobody will offer you such tight pricing such excellent pricing and you have gold as well as silver available from what is arguably one of the most prestigious, or not one, but the most prestigious supplier of gold in the world, Argo Herreus of Switzerland, the very company that provides the gold to Rolex watches. So if you know any uh, specifically uh, high quality Swiss watches, know with confidence that you know gold to them is supplied by Argo Herreus. That's how high this quality of this product is. So guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope, um, uh, Bill has, oops, I need to find, 
How do I stop screen share, Bill? I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How do I stop the screen share? There's a button at the top. <laughs> you know where you shared with me? Oh, yeah, there you go. There it is. Stop it now. Okay. Right. So, Bill, do you know if uh, we, we have any questions? Are you able to read on the YouTube at all? I'm just looking now. Just give me one second. I'm just trying to find my YouTube channel. Okay. I, I blanked it out to stop the feedback coming through. Just one second. Okay, what do we have? Oh, there it is. Okay, don't have any questions coming through right now, but um, I know there are one or two people on the call that may have seen it for the first time. Um, so the first thing they see is the Bitcoin side of things and the cryptocurrency. It might just be worth summarizing the broader part of the business just so they see the context, yeah? Sure. Okay. So um, I, I might as well give a little introduction to me as myself as well. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wealth manager from the city of London. I worked 15 years and I quit banking in order to pursue network marketing because I, I came out with a mission to bring gold ownership to the masses. Um, uh, I joined another company uh, I was working with before, a German company, uh, which I've since left. Um, uh, and I'm now with what I uh, can see and quite comfortably confirm to be the best uh, precious metals opportunity for network marketing as well as for regular ordinary savers. So what we're really doing is we're doing a number of things all at once. Um, one, it's a debt-free Swiss company. It has no borrowing. Your banks are almost entirely built of borrowing. So when a credit crisis happens, the first ones to go will be the little banks, the weak ones that they're allowing to fall in order to preserve the slightly bigger ones. A debt-free company has no such issues. So there were lots of companies during the credit crisis that were absolutely fine because they had no borrowing. Their cash flow did not depend on uh, taking uh, money from a bank. So <clears throat> we operate in a debt-free environment. We operate in a very superior jurisdiction, which is Switzerland. Um, you don't trifle with Swiss law, and companies like Argo Herreas, for example, would not work with any tin pot. We are an established proper company. Our CEO is a license holder and a licensed distributor of uh, uh, Argo Herreas. So the other thing we achieve is, because your paper money in your bank, uh, very, very clearly, and you know, uh, I don't really have to remind you, but you know, you're not earning anything on your money in the bank. So we recently had this uh, privilege of a financial advisor actually going through what our plan is and them saying, wow, this is absolutely amazing. So you know, that was a massive endorsement to the business model, uh, I feel, you know, in, in our little area. Uh, obviously, the company is growing elsewhere as well. We have worldwide affiliates. It's a global company. And you know you get to save gold and silver as a real asset, uh, and it's a real asset because uh, you can liquidate it little by little as necessary. You can hand it to the next generation intact, and they can preserve it. And I wasn't going to show this, but I keep it here at my desk all the time. But you know, I am I, I do I practice what I preach. So there's one kilogram of silver. I own this. And this is literally a piece of property at par with land. The trouble with land is you can't sell it square foot by square foot. You can't sell a building brick by brick. This I can sell basically slab by slab if I wanted to. I have more of these. And uh, so silver is one thing we do. And the other thing we do is gold. Here's basically, this is my display gold. <coughs> my other gold I keep uh, more securely. Um, but here basically this is, 100 grams of Yumicore um, uh, in, into 20 grams like that. And, you know, it has value. And it's going to have value. Even if the price goes up and down, you know, I'm an accumulator. I'm not a speculator. I don't care if it drops another 5 10%. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not worrying about it because the idea is that this is property um, instead of land where it's easier to transfer wealth 
to the next generation, first of all. Secondly, um, it will store value regardless of your or my opinion. And an ounce of gold before and after a major historical event is still an ounce of gold. So it's not going to change based on who's in the White House and who takes over from Her Majesty the Queen. Makes no difference. An ounce of gold is always an ounce of gold. And history has proven it to be reliable. So what we have here is a, is a fantastic spectrum because you have a very conservative, very stable, um, and actually what central banks do. I don't care what financial advisors and regulators and all these people necessarily, what opinions they have. It doesn't really bother me because if a central bank uses gold to, to hedge its bets, to protect its assets, to hold true value, if a central bank does that, then so should you. If a central bank takes this as a safe, conservative approach to own gold, so should you. So you have a very conservative approach where you can do purely precious metals, and this is what you can advise an average pensioner, you know, old age pensioner, next door neighbor, you want to be kind to them, tell them that their money is less safe in a bank, it would be better off in precious metals. And if they didn't know where to go, what to do, we do it practically at wholesale. We've taken out the pain of having to choose which company, which brand, what size bar, um, you know, am I being ripped off? Am I paying too much? You know, what if this happens? What if that happens? All that is taken care of. We have uh, an LBMA accredited infrastructure uh, that delivers gold to your doorstep if you choose. If you want to leave it in Switzerland or Dubai, we have a, a storage facility, licensed storage facility in Dubai. Uh, you can leave it there if you want. And if you've had enough of holding it and you really wanted your cash to buy a new camper van or whatever, sell it. Sell it. And as one of our affiliates, you will not even be paying any fees. You, you can sell it exactly at the market price and the company will take no spread. So we are competitive. We take away the pain of choosing and we take away the pain of uh, 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 pricing that most people face as a hurdle before getting into a system such as this. Um, that being said, on the other side of the spectrum, we've got this ultra modern alternative to paper money. So this is, this is what it's all about, really. We want to avoid as much as possible the use of this uh, piece of soon to be toilet paper. And forgive me for saying that, um, you know, uh, but whatever is printed on it, ultimately, it costs few cents to print this. So who decides its intrinsic value? And if it has any intrinsic value, whom are you believing? Because it just says here, Federal Reserve, whatever that is. Okay, I'm not getting into conspiracy theories today. It's, and I don't think time permits us today. But logically, um, what we want to do is take this out of a debt-prone, uh, crisis-prone, potentially collapsible bank, convert it to this in a debt-free, LBMA-accredited account, just like this one. So you're not buying gold. You're converting something dying into something everlasting. And I'm not talking spiritual sense. I'm not talking salvation and all that. Okay, please don't get it wrong. But this is truly eternal. It will be here. Um, yes, all the elements will eventually melt away, but it will be here for the rest of human history. This may soon be history. So this is the difference. Um, but there are people who want to do a little more, uh, earn passive income, without doing anything, just you know, sit back and put some money to work and let it work for you. For that, we have our Bitcoin mining operation, which can yield, depending on the package you buy, it can yield from 5 to 25% per year in returns on mining. And if it can give you that kind of a return, you can also use a compounding effect, a snowballing effect, and improve that rate that you get over a year. And that is now taking a lot of risk. 
So there's a whole spectrum of ultra stable to ultra risky all on one platform. On top of that, you can bring other currencies in listed, obviously, uh, only if they're publicly traded. You can bring those currency in as well. And then you get to choose which way do you want to go. Do you want to go more metal or more Bitcoin mining? So you have passive, you have active if you so choose. And we have a pay plan that can uh, develop uh, a significant income. I'm not going to throw six figure numbers, but it can give you a significant income within a reasonably short period of time. If you want to understand the compensation system, the compensation plan, we are available here to Skype with you uh, to get, go through the details. Uh, but bottom line is that this, this is a, a solution for the economic uncertainty out there. And you will see, even the media, whether you, whether you agree that they are, uh, uh, have an agenda or not, and whether you believe them or not, doesn't really matter. There is enough noise out there in the market about the state of banking, the state of paper money, and people desperately looking for solutions, looking for income, and looking for a uh, meaningful opportunity to be a part of. And we tick all those boxes just at the right time. So I hope, Bill, that was useful. And uh, if there's any other questions, let me know. Yes, indeed. I, sh I should have mentioned, actually, you mentioned Scott Coin. Since you've been talking, it's got 10% of the markets. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Coin's done what, sorry? I was just joking. I was just saying, since you've been talking, uh, Scott Coin's got 10%. It's gone up. Yeah. There you go. Don't worry about it. All right. Oh, okay. I'll okay. touch on some of the things you mentioned, because um, I think what we're saying here is that, you know, we're looking at ordinary people who've been working hard all their lives. It could be school teachers, there could be taxi drivers, whatever sort of background they come from. And they've worked really, really hard to, you know, to get that wealth, get those savings and pay their mortgage and, and everything else off. And then along comes um, a sort of situation where the, the bank, for whatever reason, make a mistake or over leverage themselves and uh, obviously markets devalue. And what you're saying really is if you're um risk averse then using metals gold and silver as a as an insurance against devaluation is a great idea so if you're, if you're not a guy who wants to gamble that's the sort of direction you might want to want to go towards however if you're looking to uh, grab a, a bit of a passive income then we can do that through the bitcoin mining but it, it does bring with it more risk so it's really your attitude to risk that will govern which direction you might go in yeah Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, to that point, I'd like to say that, you know, obviously a lot of people have a full-time job, uh, you know, uh, the whole spectrum, you know, my, my children's uh, teachers, you know, they could do with more cash flow. Um, you know, I, I could do with more cash flow, but everybody could do with more cash flow. <clears throat> so the cash flow part, the passive income part is where risk is required, um, uh, you know, that they can't be a greater income without it. Um, but this is one opportunity where um, network marketing principles uh, don't necessarily apply quite the same way as in many other cases. Why am I saying that? Because it's very simple. Uh, today is the 23rd of uh, November, a day before uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, if people were to buy a simple, affordable mining package as soon as possible now, then you have a comfortable 40, 30 days to the new year, just over 30 days to the new year. Um, if you earned uh, Bitcoin returns, you can connect a Zappo card or a BitPay card to your Bitcoin wallet. And in the new year, take a friend out for a coffee just when the holiday season, Christmas, <clears throat> I don't know when Hanukkah is, but generally speaking, around the season when uh, uh, you know the expenses are usually very high, um, and you know people uh, feel the burn soon after uh, the the festivities, and um, you know you can take someone out and say, by the way, the coffee I just bought, I paid with Bitcoin, and they'll be like, what? How did you pay with Bitcoin? You know, it's a very simple conversation starter. And you do not have to sell anything. 
you just say, well, you know, I bought this much mining power, um, and this is how much, how many dollars it accumulated on a daily basis, and now finally I have enough to spend it on a coffee with you, and that's all it takes. Um, you know, you don't have to recruit them into this, and you know, when they start asking questions, you know will guide you on the rest of the process anyway when people start asking questions i'm personally doing a leaflet campaign in my neighborhood i'm going to invite people to have a conversation with me over a coffee at home uh, you know because i have nothing to hide you know i'm so confident about this because yes there is risk in bitcoin mining but on the other hand uh, what is your bank giving you all your life's hard work mm. can be wiped out in a matter of days, if not minutes, when banks collapse. When the banks collapse, which they must uh, because of simple mathematics, then they can drag with them the entire insurance sector and pensions also. And when that scenario unfolds itself, the question is, what did you really, truly ever have that was of value? So taking action now, there'll be some daily incremental income coming in. As you see, the income coming in makes it very simple and straightforward. You know, spend it on a person uh, that you, know, you think would benefit from this also and has some resources to start the mining because it costs money. But if they're a good networker, you know, it's a no-brainer. And uh, anybody doing uh, revenue sharing programs with ad packs and uh, advertising that they purchase, you know, they will understand the compounding effect very, very easily. And this is an opportunity where the system does not need fresh money to come in. It's simply a machine that generates Bitcoin using a bit of clever maths and electricity. That's all it is. So, guys, I think uh, we'll, we'll call it a day now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Please send us your questions. Comment on the YouTube video when the comments become available. And, you know, um, positive, negative, whatever, it's absolutely fine. You know, uh, if you have a question, it deserves to be answered. Um, if I don't know the answer, we'll go and find it. I'm sure Bill will help uh, with the whole process as well. But, guys, uh, stay awesome. Thank you very much. And feel free to share this video if you think it's value to anybody that you know. Okay? Take care and uh, good night. Thank you, Pam. Good night. Good night.